It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. When our children do something wrong, it actually has very little to do with us and everything to do with their ability and their maturity at navigating the world around them. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. First of December, Kylie, it feels like summer. Feels like summer. I think we should do like, when I, when I used to be on the radio, we used to do like the 100 days of summer. And I feel like we should do 100 days of summer on the Happy Families podcast. <laughs> what do you reckon? Should we just, should we do it or? No, no, no. We're having a holiday. We're going to have a holiday. Okay. All right. Well, you actually, know, I am feeling a little bit flat, to be honest, because in my mind, yeah. tomorrow yes. is the first day of your break. So I'm taking a break. I'm actually having time off in December. I've got to do a little bit of work here and there, but I'm having time off in December. Yep. And I thought... And I've never done this. I've never actually taken time off like this. Oh, I'm no, this is a re- so excited. This is a really big deal. Yeah. So I was so excited because we were going to have pretty much Next a whole week, week no to kids. ourselves without the kids. Yes. But we've got two kids that have finished school that still live at home and they're going to be home. I didn't know that. No, I, know, I know. I know. But we've got these kids that have finished school and the, I mean, they're working a bit, but they're also going to be around and... <sighs> So I am just feeling a little bit gypped. Okay. Well, that, but you know what? I'm taking time off and we'll have time together. I mean, they're, they're big. They're big. They'll give us some space. Anyway, today, today, my favorite podcast episode of all the different podcasts that we do. It's not I'll Do Better Tomorrow. That's tomorrow. It's not Book Club. It's not even The Doctor's Desk. My favorite. <laughs> what's what's and, and it's not one of our answers, you know, like our uh, people that email us podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au to ask questions. The one that I love the most, the one that I get most excited about is where we just talk about parenting that's in the news. It's This Week in Parenting. Can you do that again? This Week in Parenting. parenting. <laughs> you're, so, you're so mean to me. You're mocking me now. So I thought, I, I mean, I've been watching the news in parenting as I always do. And before I kick off the four stories that we're going to go through in about two minutes each for today, I found a parenting tweet that just made me laugh so much. It's from a Twitter account called Be Kind of Witty. Be Kind of Witty. And this person has said, my parenting style right now is like gentle parenting, gentle parenting, gentle parenting. I'm cancelling Christmas! Gentle parenting. Gentle parenting. It just made me laugh. It was all in. I, I thought, how, how many parents are right now saying that they're kids? Please don't. Please don't cancel Christmas. Okay, this week in parenting, in The Guardian is where we're starting with one of the world's most famous women. Michelle Obama. There's an extract from her most recent book, and she talks about parenting, especially raising kids in the White House. When she walked into the White House, had a couple of pre-teen girls. Her mum moved out of the Chicago home that she lived in and came and moved into the White House with them to help out, ended up staying for eight years, became the the, the first (laughs) grandmother-in-chief. (laughs) <laughs> the, the first grandma. Uh, but I love, I love what she says, and I just want to read this excerpt because I want to ask you about this. She says, One tiny thing would go wrong and my mother guilt would kick in. I'd start second-guessing every choice Barrack and I had ever made. Self-scrutiny is something women are programmed to excel at, having been thrust into systems of inequality and fed fully unrealistic images of female perfection from the time that we were kids ourselves. None of us, truly none, ever live up. For mothers, the feelings of not enoughness can be especially acute. The images of maternal perfection we encounter in advertisements and across social media are often no less fake than what we see on the enhanced and photoshopped female bodies that are so often upheld as the societal gold standard for beauty. But still we are conditioned to buy into it, questing after not just the perfect body, but also the perfect children, perfect work-life balance, perfect family experience, and perfect levels of patience. It's hard not to look around as a mother and think, is everyone doing this perfectly but me? I read that and I just wondered whether we're still there. I, I, I'm wondering whether or not we've moved past it because you and I talk openly and often about being realistic about parenting and that nobody's doing it perfectly at all. But what's your experience? Do you think that she's got that? Do you think she's nailed it? Because I love the way she writes. I think that when you're in the public eye, like she was specifically, you feel even more aware of every fail. Yeah, well, that's that's true. I, even when I think about it from a parenting, fr- from a dad's yeah, point of view, totally. If we're in public and I have a scowl on my face when I'm looking at one of the children, you can be guaranteed somebody who follows us on Facebook or listens to the podcast will walk over and say, "Hi, really big fan." At which point I go, "Oh no, 
because I just was looking angrily at my child. Well, if I'm perfectly honest, it was one of the reasons I didn't want to come on the podcast with you either. Mm. Like there's something daunting about putting yourself out there, especially in an area where we are not only so self-judgmental, but we're often really judgmental of each other. We see things and we kind of think, you know, I'd never do that or – I can't believe she's doing that in public or whatever it is. We, we all have those feelings and thoughts. But I think the thing that has really, really helped me over the years is just this acknowledgement that I'm better today than I was yesterday. Yeah. It's a progress thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm hopeful that I will be better again tomorrow. I look at who my parents were when I was growing up and I look at who they've become now and they're still not perfect. But they treat our children very differently to the way they treated me and my siblings. Mm, mm. And that gives me hope that I'm never going to be perfect. I'm never going to get it all right. But that's not what this is all about. So Michelle Obama's mum, with permission, uh, shared a handful of ideas in this article, in this extract from the book, uh, with the uh, disclaimer, which comes directly from the grandma herself, just make sure they know I'm not in the business of telling anybody how to live. But she gave a couple of ideas for, and I, I think this is great parenting advice, great parenting news. She said, number one, teach your kids to wake themselves up. Number two, it isn't about you. Good parents are always working to put themselves out of business. Love that one. You know, I think that that is the biggest lesson that I've had to learn. Mm-hmm. When our children do something wrong, It actually has very little to do with us and everything to do with their ability and their maturity at navigating the world around them. It's it's so powerful. And we've just got to give them the space that they need to be able to do that. Number three, know what's truly precious. I really like that one. That's something that I talk about all the time. People matter, things don't. Number four, parent the child you've got. And the last one that she adds in this extract, which we will link to in the show notes, is... Come home. We will always like you here. Great parenting advice and at parenting this week. I would change that to love because sometimes I don't like my kids very much at all, but I'll always love them. Good one. I'll, I'll accept that. Okay, our second parenting in the news this week in parenting. A little while ago, I was on a podcast called One Day You'll Thank Me. It runs out of the New Zealand Herald. And uh, this week on that podcast, they've got an article talking about Jason Gunn's genius parenting hack. Let me read this to you and tell me, like, we've got to adopt this and we've got to, we need to adopt it as of right now. He says, you're in the car. The phone rings. Your kids give a look as if to say, just let it go. You pick the phone up, obviously you're on hands-free, everybody, and you go, hi, g'day, and you watch the kids roll their eyes. And then you say, hey, listen, can I stop you there? I actually can't chat right now because I've got a VIP in the car with me. Can I call you back? Very important person in the car with me, so I'm going to have to let you go. And you'll see your kid go, are you joking? Who's the VIP? And you go, dude, you're the VIP. You're the very important person. I'm not going to take a work call right now. Do you like that? I love it. So I just thought I'd share. This week in parenting, we've got this guy, uh, Jason Gunn, with a genius parenting hack. And I read that and thought, not only do I have to start doing that in the car with the kids, but I need to... With me, did you say? Yes, yes, yes. I definitely, definitely said that as well. Uh, but I, I, I want to tell everyone about it because I thought, what a, what a great hack. Which also reminds me that that means that I'm not supposed to make phone calls while I'm in the car with the kids. Mm. Mm. Well, number three, we're going to look at some strict parenting. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of cheating a bit. I know that this is this week in parenting, but I'm kind of collaborating with the doctor's desk. I'm, well, sorry. if it's recent research, it's this week in parenting. Yeah, I think so. So uh, some researchers, and I'm just going to read the headline here. Some researchers found that strict parenting can affect the way the body reads DNA. Now, this is fascinating to me, and it's completely consistent with what we think we've been learning for a long time about how how strict parenting affects children throughout their lives. The way the body reads the children's DNA, according to the article, might change as a result of strict parenting. These alterations may become hardwired into the DNA of children who perceive their parents to be harsh, raising their biological risk for depression in adolescence and later life. This was work that was presented at the European College of Neuropsychopharmacology, the congress that was held recently in Vienna. Uh, the researcher elaborates, we discovered that perceived harsh parenting, so that is, that's not necessarily harsh parenting, it's the child believing, Deceptions. yeah, believing my parents are harsh towards me, with physical punishment and psychological manipulation, so we're talking about physical punishment and, and, and controlling behaviour, can introduce an additional set of instructions on how a gene is read, 
to become hardwired into DNA. We have some indications that these changes themselves can predispose the growing child to depression. This does not happen to the same extent if the children have had a supportive upbringing. I just I love what we're discovering more and more about gene expression, about how our our brains and our bodies work and how the way we raise our kids influences who we are the way our parents raised us and and their parents raised them influence who we are today we can turn genes on and off by the way that we're parenting our kids i find that really intriguing because we've been talking about this massive shift in mental health and mental illness specifically in the last you know handful of years and just how all intents and purposes we're dealing with a pandemic of mental illness across the globe and when we think about the way the majority of our parents parented us we would mostly put this into a very strict authoritarian home where smacking was often a huge part of that process yeah and to have them have the findings that they're finding now really would support what we're seeing in society in general Okay, so I've got one more thing for us to talk about with this week in parenting. I'm interested about this one because dad gets slammed for demanding mornings off on the weekends. Yeah, so I'm really interested in your reaction to this one. Mm. Uh, This was in The Mirror in the UK and the article says he has a six-month baby. A six-month baby? That's what it says. I mean, typo, I don't know. He has a six-month-old baby and works full-time while his wife is a part-time worker and a stay-at-home mum. But now he is demanding time off. The article goes on to say, The arrival of a new baby can be absolutely joyous, but it can also create tensions in relationships as couples work out who is responsible for what when it comes to childcare. It's a scenario confronting one couple and a solution seems hard to come by. The man shared his gripe on Reddit, claiming he needs time out from parenting duties. There were over 5,000 comments to his post with most being unsympathetic to his plight. He claims to be living the dream, but he may soon be living in a nightmare if his demands for time off from household duties become a reality. Here's what he said. My wife and I have a six-month-old baby girl. She's mostly a stay-at-home mum. She works two half days a week, and her sister watches the baby. I work full-time, and I go to school one day a week. We've always had an arrangement where she takes care of household duties, cooking, cleaning, and our baby care, while I happily support her monetarily. He's very happy with the arrangement, adding... Honestly, we're both living our dream life. And my wife does an absolutely spectacular job taking care of me and our little one. But there is a sticking point, And there's one that, it's one that they can't agree on. On the weekends, we share baby duty. However, our girl has hit a bit of a sleep regression, waking up every two hours. Since my wife breastfeeds, she's always taking care of the baby overnight. She's a light sleeper and unfortunately has insomnia, whereas I'm a deep sleeper and wouldn't wake up for baby cries anyway. Recently, my wife has been asking me to wake up with the baby both days on the weekends so that she can get an extra hour of sleep. Baby wakes up at around 7 a.m. I get the baby dressed and take over for that hour, but sometimes I want to be the one that gets to sleep in an extra hour. So he decides to broach the subject with his wife, who does her best to understand his needs, but it ends in an argument. Kylie, does he have a leg to stand on? I hope there's a spare room. That's all I can say. (laughs) So I, I I want to actually bring some balance here because the internet is known for its outrage. But back in the days when we had a brand new firstborn baby girl uh, who had tremendous reflux, wasn't sleeping, you were absolutely exhausted, you were full-time mum, full-time housekeeper, and I was working as a radio announcer, we essentially sat down and agreed that you were going to take care of it and I was going to sleep because I had to show up, I had to work, I had to earn the money, and being on the radio, I had to actually sound like I was happy to be at work, I had to sound like I was happy to be awake. Now, on reflection, I wish that I had been more supportive. I wish that I'd been more present, more available. But the general idea here is that if you've got a breadwinner and you've got somebody who is full-time caring, it seems to me that it's reasonable that the majority of that care would be done by the carer. Where I'm going to jump in, though, is I'm going to suggest that on the weekend, when mum needs the sleep, surely he could lift a little. I mean, he, he, he can do an extra hour or two on the weekends. It doesn't seem like that big an ask, and I do think he's in the wrong. So we've had, again, we've had this conversation on the podcast a few times now. The conversations I have with women who are most disgruntled yes. are the ones that feel like there's an unequal distribution of responsibilities across the relationship. And if I was perfectly honest... I would have loved for you to be more involved yeah. in the parenting process when we had younger children. And I wish I, I, in hindsight, I wish I had been. But we learn and we grow. Yes. And this is actually not really about sleep. 
This is actually about a wife who, for all intents and purposes, just like me, is really happy to be a stay-at-home mum, take care of the children, take care of the house, look after her husband. But who's looking after her? Hmm. Who's taking care of her on the, on the days that he actually has the capacity to lighten her load? He's actually only thinking about himself. The reality is if you had come to me and said, because of the way my work is structured during the week, I would really just love to be able to have a sleep in on a Saturday. Do you think that maybe you could offer that to me and then you could have that same treat on a Sunday? But to be arbitrary in your (laughs) desire to have it for you and you think that it's justified – I think would be more damaging to the relationship than just about anything else you could do at that point. I love I love being married to you. I love listening to this is this is why I'm who I am because of the way that you have encouraged me to think through things and and grow. I think we're both really saying the same thing though. It's it's fine to divide the labor. It's fine to split things up, but we've got to be attentive to one another's needs and that selfishness will ultimately undermine the relationship if it's not nipped in the bud. What I love as well, though, about what you've said is you've highlighted that's where we were once upon a time. And over time, so long as we are attentive and interested in the other person's well-being, we grow through that and we become better because of it. If I could go back and visit 22-year-old me or 24-year-old me when we had that first baby, oh, man, I would give myself an uppercut. I would get myself to do things so very differently. And I reckon this guy is probably having a pretty steep learning curve as, as a result of the 5,000 Reddit comments. At least I hope he is. So that's This Week in Parenting. Kylie, love your input uh, and your ideas as always. Thank you so much for doing that. Tomorrow, it's I'll Do Better Tomorrow. We'll find out where we're going right, where we're going mm-hmm wrong and how we can make our family happier we really appreciate so much that you listen to the happy families podcast the happy families podcast is produced by justin rulon from bridge media craig bruce is our executive producer and for more info about making your family happier please visit happyfamilies.com.au